Hey, what up, everybody? Um, this is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. I just finished watching the uh, the Owen Hart Heart of Gold um, documentary um, that just came out today. Everybody knows that uh, I love um, WWE DVDs. I love having a, a great DVD collection. I like buying the uh, the documentaries uh, when they first come out uh, with the WWE Network. The uh, the sort of match collection. Um, DVD sets that come out, I've normally sort of scaled back on those. I don't pick them up as fast as I used to. Um, but, uh, if it's got a documentary on there, it, I, I look at it as a, it's a must have and, and I want to have it. I, I want to be one of the first to watch it. Um, I want to, I want to get everybody's thoughts on it, but I, I honestly don't want to know your thoughts until I know what my thoughts are on it. If that, if that makes any sense. Um, the Owen Hart documentary was was good I think you can tell by me saying good that it wasn't great um it was you know it, it, it's it's sometimes you watch a WWE documentary and you're like top 10 guaranteed right there I, I don't have a full list of them but I, I put this in the top 10 this was great the Owen Hart um documentary w was the only emotion that I have right now is honestly I'm sad uh, that that's about the only way that I can put it. Um, there there were parts in there that was good. I can honestly say that I I learned something. Um, I learned a lot about Owen. Uh, I I didn't know that when uh, Owen Hart wrestled as the Blue Blazer that he actually quit the company uh, and he went to go wrestle um, in Mexico and in Europe. And uh, you know he he toured around. He didn't just. I, I I honestly thought he was a lifer in WWF. I thought honestly he just got to a point with the Blue Blazer where they sent him home, uh, and then they brought him back as a part of the uh, the new foundation uh, with Jim the Anvil Nightheart. And I thought they just picked up where they they left off. I mean I can remember um, them bringing in Owen and calling him Brett's brother, and uh, you know him getting the tag team push that he got. Um, but uh, I, I didn't know that he wrestled out there. And I didn't know that he wrestled for WCW. Um, basically, uh, Tyson Kidd talks about the fact that when he was growing up, uh, Natalia had a tape of Owen wrestling in WCW. And it was like a hidden tape um, that, uh, you know, you can tell that he's wrestling uh, in WCW. It's probably the Saturday night, um, you know, world-class championship wrestling show. Or not world-class, I apologize, but... World Championship Wrestling, 6.05, Saturday night. Um, basically, it had that set. And, and, and um, you know, I, I didn't know about that. And, I, I um, you know, they talk about the fact, you know, Owen comes back. I, I honestly can tell you about the Blue Blazer. I didn't know there was as many highlights of the Blue Blazer as there was. I didn't know about Owen's style of wrestling um, when he was the Blue Blazer. You know, they talked about his famous move where he would go into... Uh, you know, an arm lock and then jump up on the top rope, balance and then back flip off uh, to clothesline his opponent in the ring. I'd never seen that before. Um, basically, my highlights of the Blue Blazer is the WrestleMania 5 match against uh, Mr. Perfect. Um, that's almost exclusively what I remember of the Blue Blazer as I was a kid. Um, and they have these great, you know, house show matches, him wrestling Mr. Perfect, him wrestling against some job guys. Um, you, you see the, you know, sort of the evolution of the Blue Blazer, however long he was this character. He had at least four different masks, so he had to have been wrestling as the Blue Blazer for longer than I honestly um, can remember. Um, but, you know, he comes back and he's the tag team guy, um, and he's, he's in the new foundation and it, it looks like it's going to be going somewhere. And then Jim, the Anvil Nightheart, they says that he makes a mistake and uh, he screwed up and they, they had to fire him. Uh, he leaves the company and then, uh, from there, um, uh, he starts tag teaming, uh, with, uh, high energy Coco Beware. Um, and, and that really doesn't really seem like it's going anywhere. Lots of funny talk about the fact of, you know, Owen Hart wrestling in hammer pants, uh, with the suspenders and where the hell was this going? And it is what it is. And, um, he's done again. And, um, you know, from there, it's actually, uh, you know, Bret Hart who has to go to Vince McMahon and say, you know, when are you going to do something with Owen? Owen's better than this. And, uh, Bret, um, you know, sort of twists. Uh, the arm of uh, Vince McMahon. Vince is, you know, planning this brother versus brother match, uh, where it's going to be Brett against Bruce, 
And, uh, you know, Brett basically says that, uh, you know, Bruce isn't going to be able to go out there and give the best matches and the best matches will actually come if it's Owen versus Brett. And Brett says the only way I'm doing the storyline if it's with Owen and uh, Vince and, you know, everybody, you know, basically say, all right, then that's what we're going to do. And they start to light the fire under Owen. And, you know, we, we see the, the match that you build up to it where they're teaming at the Royal. No, I apologize. I was just screwed this up. But they, they're teaming at Survivor Series where it's the Hart family um, all together. And you see Owen uh, go running into the ropes. Uh, he bumps Brett, and because Brett goes flying, everybody's paying attention to Brett on the outside. Owen gets rolled up, and Owen ends up being the only member of the foundation um, that, that gets pinned and eliminated. And he comes back, and he's mad at Brett. Brett was out of position. He shouldn't have been walking the ropes. He wasn't in the right spot. He honestly side with Owen on this one a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, Brett is, and, you know, at that time, you know, the man, uh, so it is what it is. And, um, you know, from there they team up at the Royal Rumble, uh, in a good match against the Steiner brothers. They're not able to get the win. Owen kicks, uh, Brett's leg out. And next thing you know, they finally had their match at WrestleMania 10. And this is the eye opening, uh, moment for Owen Hart's career of showing everyone how good this guy is. And from there, they go to a SummerSlam. They have the uh, the Steel Cage match. And um, everything that is there. Um, lots of lots of good stuff along the way. I, I don't want to give up you know, too much of everything that went down. I, I'll tell you that honestly, after um, the Bret Hart versus uh, Owen Hart angle, um, they talk about Yokozuna for a minute. And... Um, Honestly, that, that next period, before he turns to the Blue Blazer, um, and, and when, when they get to that point, you can already see the ending is coming soon, and it starts to take a drastic turn, and it starts to get pretty sad, because you know it's coming, and uh, there's, no, there's no way to get away from it, uh, besides you know, hitting eject and uh, you know, not finishing uh, the documentary. Um, but, uh, sometimes you gotta put, put, put yourself through it and, uh, you know, you know that the sad stuff's coming and, um, you gotta see what's coming and, uh, that, that's just about it. But, um, um, honestly, there's no way to get around this. Um, they talk about the fact of how the screw job went down. They don't talk about, you know, the, all the specifics of it, but basically they talk about the fact that Owen came to work the next day and he basically said, you know, what happened had to happen. He, he, they, they say he sided with with Vince and WWF. That's not the way that I've heard the story. That's not the way that the story's been told. Um, as somebody who's been a, uh, um, a Wrestling Observer subscriber, that's not the way I've heard Dave Meltzer tell the story. That's not the way I've read about the story. That's not I, the way I've heard about shoot interviews of wrestlers talking about what was going on. Um, you know, I, I'm not in the business. I don't know Owen. I don't know Brett. I don't know Triple H. But um, the way that they told the story of Owen just showing up to work the next day and saying, all right, boss, let's go do this. That's not the way I've been told. I've, I, you know, I've always heard that Owen went home. Owen tried to get out of the company. Um, you know, Vince, you know, needed a Canadian star and uh, he'd already lost Brett. And, um, you know, he needed to keep Owen and he made Owen all the promises under the sun. He promised him that he was going to pay him more money. He promised that he was going to put him in the main events. And, uh, you know, you definitely tell that was the plan once Owen finally came back to work. But a certain Shawn Michaels put the kibosh on everything. And, you know, Triple H was honestly a part of that as well. Um, and, uh, you know, they basically made sure that Owen wasn't going to reach the main event status for one reason or another, whether if it was just to stick another knife into the back of uh, Brett, even though he was working for the uh, the opposition, working for WCW at the time. But, uh, the, the, you know, I honestly, that's just, it, it, you know, I'm yelling bullshit at the television. And uh, that's just the way, I, not the way I remember it. But uh, I'm very um, excited um, to watch the uh, the matches, as well as uh, the, the Blu-ray bonus features of watching, you know, I, I don't think it's the complete version of um, of Monday Night Raw. That might be on that Raw 20th anniversary set, the DVD that came out a little bit ago, but I'm not 100% sure. One way or another, I know I have it on DVD. It might just be the wrestlers talking about Owen and not putting the actual matches on there, but 
lots of good things about Owen. Um, lots of good things of uh, wrestlers talking about all the uh, stories that you hear about him playing pranks on uh, on on everybody. Um, definitely a good one. Um, more than likely, they'll they'll do a sale either for Christmas or right around New Year's, where WWE Shop will basically be giving this away on DVD or Blu-ray. Um, you know, pick it up on a sale. You don't need to pick this up right now. It's not one of the best DVDs they've ever made. Um, it's a good one. It's sad. Sad, sad. Might even be, uh, you know, I put it right there with the Ultimate Warrior and the Macho Man. Um, we all know how this one was going to end. But, um, you know, it's still sad the way they tell the story. So, we'll see what you guys think about it. Owen Hart, Heart of Gold. It's a part of the, uh, the heart and soul, the Hart family right here. I, I put this together as a little shrine for him. You can see Brian Pillman. Uh, you can see Brett the Hitman Hart, the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. And now here, as a part of the WWE DVD collection, Owen Hart, Heart of Gold, two-disc Blu-ray set.